Sunday, April the 23rd, 2006, began as peacefully as any other Sunday in the small city of Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada. Ranked as one of the best communities to live in, Medicine Hat has been described as a little safe haven. But on that one specific spring weekend 16 years ago, the serenity of the city was shattered when a horrifying and senseless crime shocked not just the people of Medicine Hat, but the entire nation. That Sunday afternoon, a little boy, just six years old, decided to go and ask another young boy living in the neighborhood, eight-year-old Tyler Richardson, to come out and play. The six-year-old knocked and knocked on the Richardson's family door, but strangely, nobody came to open it. Even though Tyler and his parents, 42-year-old Mark Richardson and his wife, 48-year-old Deborah, should have been home. Eventually, the six-year-old gave up. But before returning home, he peered through the basement window. Perhaps the Richardson had not heard him if they were down there. Indeed, the little boy saw two adults in the basement, but to his horror, they lay motionless on the floor. Covered in blood, terrified, the six-year-old ran to his mother to tell her what he had just seen. When police arrived at the scene, they discovered the bodies of Mark and Deborah in the basement. Both had been stabbed multiple times. The defense wounds showed the Richardsons had desperately fought for their lives, but the killer had been able to overpower them and convert the Richardsons' basement into a slaughterhouse. And sadly, the tragedy did not end there. Upon searching the house, the officers discovered Tyler's body on his bed with a deep cut to his neck. As if all that was not enough, the investigators' stomachs sank when they saw a family portrait on the wall. There were not just three Richardsons, but four. Tyler's 12-year-old sister, Jasmine, was missing. The police immediately issued an Amber Alert, thinking Jasmine Richardson may have been kidnapped by the killer who butchered her entire family. Hoping to find any clues, the investigators then went to Jasmine's school to check her locker. What they found turned the whole investigation upside down. The police discovered a rather disturbing, hand-drawn cartoon strip from Jasmine's locker. The 12-year-old had drawn two figures burning her family alive. Needless to say, Jasmine's status as a victim quickly changed to a potential suspect. But why would a 12-year-old want to kill her parents and younger brother? The detectives soon got an opportunity to ask that question to Jasmine herself as she was tracked down using digital evidence and arrested the following day in Leda, Saskatchewan. And she was not alone. Jasmine was brought in together with her boyfriend, 23-year-old Jeremy Steinking. These two did not even try to deny what had happened, but how it had happened was now the issue. Jasmine and Jeremy both blamed each other. Jasmine saying Jeremy had slaughtered her family by himself without her having any part in it, while Jeremy's lawyer claimed the 12-year-old had manipulated his client to kill her family. Meanwhile, the police investigated the couple's history and eventually uncovered a twisted love story that resulted in triple murder. Jasmine had met Jeremy in a local mall in 2005 when she was still a happy and carefree girl with a large circle of friends. Jeremy, however, was an unemployed high school dropout with mental health issues living together with his alcoholic mother. The two were not exactly the perfect match. The age gap alone was worrying. Still, Jasmine and Jeremy started talking on social media sites like MySpace and Vampire Freaks and eventually began a relationship. On their profiles in MySpace, Jasmine described herself as awkward nocturnal Wiccan whose hero was serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. And in turn, Jeremy said he was a 300-year-old reincarnated werewolf who loved the taste of blood and was interested in pain and razor blades. As you can guess, when Jasmine's parents were not exactly happy when they found out about her werewolf boyfriend, especially after seeing the following message Jeremy had sent to Jasmine. You are a sight for sore eyes and I miss you more than killing people. Can we get together and kill people together? Understandably, Mark and Deborah were absolutely terrified and feared what could happen to their daughter if they let the relationship continue. So they tried to get Jasmine to see a counselor, took her computer and ordered her never to speak to Jeremy again. 
Unfortunately, that was the beginning of the end. Jasmine continued to see Jeremy behind her parents' back and now the couple began to develop a plan for how they could get rid of their problem once and for all. One day, Jasmine sent her boyfriend a message that said, I have a plan. It begins with me killing them and ends with me living with you. Following that plan, Jeremy broke into the Richardson home on April the 23rd, 2006 and stabbed Jasmine's parents to death with two kitchen knives as they came to see where the sound was coming from. Shockingly, even though Jasmine tried to deny it, she apparently was the one who slit her younger brother's throat. Tyler was not in any way responsible for Jasmine's problems with her their parents and yet his own sister butchered him before running away with her boyfriend. The two even attended a party afterwards, bragging about what they had just done. During her trial in 2007, Jasmine Richardson pleaded not guilty, claiming she had only talked about killing her family, hypothetically. The jury, however, did not believe her excuses and returned with a guilty verdict for three counts of first degree murder on July the 6th, 2007. Due to her young age, Jasmine Richardson was only sentenced to 10 years in prison. Jeremy, however, was not smart enough to keep his mouth shut and confessed to the murders while in prison to an undercover police officer. He was sentenced to three life sentences on December the 15th with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Jasmine Richardson underwent intensive rehabilitation and was eventually released in 2016. After Queen's Bench, Justice Scott broke his words to her, I think your parents and brother would be proud of you. Clearly, you cannot undo the past. You can only live each day with the knowledge you can control, how you behave and what you do each day. Only time will tell if Jasmine Richardson is really rehabilitated and did not just trick the system. What do you think?